Hello. So, last day we discussed uh, the strategies required for the unauthorized colonies and uh, urban villages. Uh, we saw that uh, the unauthorized villages and, and unauthor unauthorized colonies and urban villages need a separate approach and a, um, a intuitive um, strategies to address those issues. Uh, today we will discuss uh, the very important um, uh, problem of the informal housing category that is the pavement dwellers and the night shelters. Uh, you know in our cities uh, mostly in the major cities lot of people are there who uh, lives on the uh, pavements uh, open, to sky, open to sky areas uh, because they do not have any um, uh, house and also they cannot afford even a minimum house. So, for that reason they are uh, they are sometimes forced to uh, stay or live as a pavement dwellers. So, today we will discuss how uh, what is the overall picture overall scenario and what are the um, uh, planning option what we can interventions uh, what type of interventions we can take for the pavement dwellers. So, let us see uh, some background uh, briefly that uh, uh, 1.94 million homeless people in India we have and especially 0.77 million is in an urban area. Uh, this problem is generic and incremental. Uh, we uh, discussed that uh, within the informal housing, the people coming from the rural areas and the smaller cities to the bigger cities, when they do not find any affordable housing, uh, they are forced to live in the uh, public land. So, this is a generic problem. Uh, of, of the nature of the rural ur urban migration, rural urban disparity, all those uh, issues which are uh, existing at a macro scale, but at the city level, at the micro scale, we find that this is a chronic issue and the number is not decreasing, it is increasing day by day. So, basically the pavement dwellers, they depend upon the public services and infrastructure on payment. Uh, uh, it is very surprising to know that uh, the other economic group like middle income group or higher income group and even lower income group, when they are uh, given the opportunity to take the public services like water supply or any other services on payment basis, they make protest. But the pavement dwellers, when they take any public service like uh, sanitation or sometimes water also they had to they have to pay otherwise uh, so because they basically survive on the public services and public amenities uh, by and large so so that is that is the thing so they have to pay each and every stages of their life not only that their livelihood is based on uh, to uh, to negotiate and compromise between various life situations like uh, like uh, you can say license raj, bribery, theft, physical and mental abuse, uh, eviction, arrest by the police and uh, social stigma. So, life events are largely centered around lack of center because they do not have the shelter, uh, they face all these uh, humiliation, all these kind of uh, problems in, in, in their living space. So, as a result, uh, they have they do not have the required confidence to, uh, to, to, to earn more money, to earn more money to get their own house and get their own livelihood. So, they just uh, live on the minimal uh, whatever they get in minimum resources possible uh, for the life because they are humiliated because of so many uh, um, socio-economic and administrative uh, administrative uh, problems like evictions and uh, arrest by police all these um, elements. Let us now see that how where this type of people um, uh, stay. Uh, you can see that most the predominant uh, portion of this pavement, pavement dwellers they stay in a pavement like the uh, open streets and the and the uh, and the street areas and the uh, terminals area like uh, the bus terminals or any open transport related uh, areas. And uh, other than that, uh, 14 percent stay at the at the, uh, the shops and homes. Uh, you ha might have seen that be, be just in front of the shops and home, there could be a small um, um, area or there could be a um, the sh sheds or kind of a ledges. So, below that um, particular um, sh sheds, they can stay, you can see the pictures like that. And also, they stay in the railway platform 11 percent and 
places of worship like uh, temple, mosque and uh, the similar uh, establishment and apart from that uh, there are few more uh, typologies we, which are staying like uh, different uh, kind of areas like other than road any open space or any uh, canal bank area river front area as a pavement dwellers. So, basically their place of life is primarily driven by the livelihood location which are sometimes mobile because this we uh, discussed in the uh, previous few lectures also because their livelihood location is not static. Their uh, uh, job generation or job, uh, job location is not uh, dependent on any shop or any private or any establishment which is static. So, they just roam around the city around the uh, major commercial places wherever they find uh, some opportunity to earn money and they depend on their uh, most of the most of them depend on the, uh, the the street vending and similar kind of uh, uh, livelihood generation and also they uh, live they survive sometimes on the on the begging so now let us see the major causes of homelessness you can see the major causes of homelessness are extreme poverty which is 46 per percent followed by the absence of family family um, uh, because they do not have the family backup and family support sometimes they become uh, individual and they become uh, without shelter. Uh, few of them like 10 percent they are abandoned by the uh, family may be in the rural area or in this small town area and because they are abandoned by the family because of many reason may be disease may be any reason they come to the city and stay like this and also uh, family abuse because of the family problem and family um, uh, conflicts sometimes they come out from the family and uh, stay in a inferior situation like that. So, that means the absence of the social identity is the key words there they do not have any social identity not a family not a um, any any kind of social uh, belongingness they have, but they, uh, they, act, they live here as an individual or as a um, mobile person. Now, let us see what are the situation uh, in present context. Now, we have uh, now we, we, we can uh, what kind of solution or intervention we can provide. Now, one solution is the shelter based like we can provide shelter like night shelter. So, the night shelter and it is a uh, it is a viable or it is a uh, accepted uh, solution what we have been trying for last few decades. So, that is one option, but night shelter has few uh, limitations and challenges that will come little later on. Let us see the other options which we can do. Now, another option is the infrastructure based. We can provide the infrastructure and basic services to these people so that uh, in some of the location, including the night shelter location, so community toilet uh, we can give. Other than community toilet, we can uh, we can uh, we can provide the drinking water facility uh, so that around their places of livelihood they can uh, they can have their uh, basic services fulfilled and so that they do not uh, come to the city uh, city areas and end up in the open defecation. So, those type of interventions are basically service and infrastructure based. And another option could be the livelihood based because uh, uh, the basic reason why they are mobile uh, is the livelihood based because of the extreme poverty they are uh, they are compromising with the life situations like that. So, therefore, if we pro uh, can provide a kind of uh, mobile uh, vending uh, vending uh, kind of uh, facility as mobile shops uh, they can have their livelihood through that mobile shops. In our Indian cities we have seen that the mobile shops or the the movable shops uh, on the uh, manually uh, driven carts is visible. So, those kinds of carts uh, can be given to these people so that they can have their livelihood. Yes, it is important to know that these people even do not have the capacity to purchase those um, nominal carts and nominal uh, street vendors um, facilities. So, that is one thing that we can consider in this point we can consider another very important development which uh, has come up in recent times that is the um, recently we have in government of India they have uh, they have came out they have come out with the uh, street vendors act. 
2013. So, under the street vendors act, uh, every street vendors who are vending on the uh, streets area, uh, it is told that they can have the street vending on the street, uh, but in a demarcated zone, uh, definitely there will not be any permanent establishment or permanent uh, shops, but they can have their livelihood through a movable or kiosk type of establishment and those zoning, micro zoning could be done by the city authorities like the uh, urban local bodies. So, through this act, the street vendings uh, now become a, uh, a kind of a right uh, to pursue their livelihood even on the streets, but yes, definitely it will not be a, a kind of um, a permanent um, establishment or permanent uh, structure in the streets or the open areas, but they can have the movable kind of carts and movable kind of shops so that they can have the livelihood. So, that particular approach, particular intervention can be linked with the pavement dwellers and pavement dwellers can get the benefit out of the street vendings act as well. Now, uh, there are a lot of uh, initiatives we have seen like uh, uh, one national flagship program was proposed some few years be before. Uh, it was proposed to have a uh, flagship program for the uh, street vendors right now under the national housing and urban habitat policy and um, uh, policy uh, we are taking adequate uh, attention uh, as a separate kind of a um, approach paper or separate intervention that government of India is right now working out in uh, Rajiv Abbas Jojana and, um, and also in national uh, urban livelihood mission, mission all their uh, livelihoods and other uh, life si other requirements are linked with the programs like uh, their shelter program, but uh, as of now uh, there need to be a lot of integration between the all components of their planning like say shelter, uh, livelihood, infrastructure and other amenities. So, therefore, uh, it needs it, we have to wait for few more times so that uh, to see that uh, the really uh, we will come to uh, in um, planning intervention for giving uh, integrated and a comprehensive solution for the night shelter. As of now, we are what we are doing at the various cities that we are uh, making shelters which we call, call, call it as a night shelter. The night shelters are basically uh, few uh, accommodation for the sleeping purpose which is given for the poor people and uh, the objective is that during the day period they can have their livelihood, they can pursue their livelihood uh, in the city areas as a uh, movable or mobile person or through the street vending and in the evening they can come back and they can uh, stay there for their sleeping purpose. So, uh, the objective of the night shelter that those who cannot even think of any category of the formal house housing and uh, night shelters are the temporary shelter arrangement for the urban poor street dwellers available after evening. Uh, out water supply sanitation facility is provided at the night shelter. Some NGOs are given responsibilities for operation. Now, operating night shelter is a um, is a very important task bec because registering the uh, the people of the or the pavement dwellers who are going to stay there that is the first job. Then the providing the facility in a systematic manner, maintaining it and uh, and and time to time giving the basic amenities and facilities is important. For example, during the extreme weather season like extreme cold or extreme uh, hot season, uh, it, it becomes very crucial to provide them the adequate facility. So, uh, we need um, um, various NGOs and similar organizations who can run because uh, right now for example, in Delhi, uh, Delhi we have many like around 500 uh, night shelters, but it is not it may not be possible for the city authorities to run all the night shelter. So, let us see one such example where uh, we can see that uh, uh, that some other NGOs like uh, society for the promotion of youth and masses they are um, um, operating or maintaining night shelters like that. So, all these programs are conducted under the Delhi urban shelter improvement board DUSIB uh, program. It is under under the government of NCT national capital uh, territory of Delhi. So, under this they have uh, this is one of the NGO they have been managing 16 or uh, night shelters where you can see some of the pictures how they sleep. Now, night shelters provided for the homeless um, that is called the Apna Ghar that is the uh, uh, name of the project they termed. Now, you can see that 
bunker beds and bed sheets, blankets, adequate lighting, fans and cooler during the summer uh, is given, uh, community kitchen at the select shelters also given uh, for the uh, taking the uh, major meals, major food uh, purpose and uh, lockers for keeping valuables of guests and, and for themselves also given. Now why this is given? Because uh, the night shelter is not meant for a family, it is meant for basically individual persons who are basically um, uh, 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 staying in the city as a city street dweller. So, therefore, uh, to, to enable them to have their own personalized space, they can provide some amount of locker facility or some amount of storage, storage facility because they do not have the, the full house or full uh, apartments or full units as such. So, they will have will be given only one uh, bed and one uh, space for the, uh, the, the basic services. Then safe drinking water and bathing water will also be given. First aid and monthly medical checkups uh, uh, is um, uh, available in some of the night shelters. Now, this night shelters can be linked with the other government schemes like uh, EY, DAY, uh, DAY uh, or the other numbers, voter card, pro, uh, voter card or bank account opening, uh, all this can be linked with the night shelter programs. Now, you can see few more night shelter options. Now, uh, the one of the major crucial um, uh, issues for the night shelter is uh, its location. I told, I already discussed in the last lecture that in a city, if this is the city extent and this is the CBD, night shelter basically uh, is required around this uh, business district because uh, the pavement dwellers or the street dwellers they by and large uh, stay or 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 stay their major time in their life around the CBD because of their livelihood situation. They cannot survive uh, in the periphery of the city, but it is very difficult to get the even small pieces of land. Uh, within very vicinity of the CBD. Therefore, uh, we might have to think about a kind of a kind of a um, temporary solution at night shelter. I give an example that few years back when um, when uh, we saw that the government of Delhi uh, they provided the the um, abandoned they converted the abandoned buses DTC buses as a night shelter during the winter. Now uh, between the winter and the summer the major problem is during summer they mostly prefer to sleep in the road they do not prefer to sleep inside any night shelter, inside any structure because of the uh, comfort reason, they do not feel comfort because of their inferior uh, uh, environmental uh, quality inside the building. So, they feel um, uh, they are most, uh, they are, they like uh, mostly uh, to stay outside the house, but in the winter season, they have to stay in the, in, inside the house. Therefore, winter season, the requirement of the night shelter is more. So, what can be done that we can develop some kind of temporary solution in terms of in terms of like as I told that uh, the, the buses were used for a uh, temporary shelter option. Also, we can think about um, some kind of temporary or kind of um, kinetic um, uh, kinetic architectural solution uh, or structure for this kind of uh, facility. We can develop or design uh, kinetic solution which can be dismantled or which can be had can be assembled at the some of the location during night for, uh, within quick time and without taking much space in this in the in the sit in the streets. Uh, like it can take say um, um, uh, the three meter by three meter or three meter by four meter a minimum space like that, and within that some people can stay. It's a, like a tent like structure. So those kind of innovative solutions uh, need to be worked out need to be designed, need to be uh, promoted through various NGOs, through various organizations and because, because other than that we cannot, 
cannot address the whole uh, pavement dwellers because the size and the amount of the pavement dweller, the problem, the domain, the volume of the problem is enormous and gigantic. We cannot address the problem. So that is the one uh, issue what we must address. That is the location issue. Location issue. The second issue is that since we told that that it is basically for individual person. basically designed or um, uh, conceptualized for the individual person, but it becomes a problem if there are individual women or there are family. There could be a family, one or two family or broken family. So, for them, for this kind of people, it is very difficult to, to accommodate with, a, um, with other people uh, in the same place or in the same room. And also there could be um, physically disabled pe people. disabled persons. So, this special categories like physically disabled or mentally disabled or mentally retarded persons can be there. So, for them it is very difficult to accommodate within the one uh, physical space with other people. So, all of them requires a different kind of treatment, different kind, kind of accommodation. Probably for the women uh, we can, we can, we can uh, provide a separate night shelter, designated night shelter for the women individual women for family we can link it link it with the other uh, with other slum improvement program main program like we discussed thoroughly for all the slum improvement program we have uh, we can uh, we can redevelop the slums we can resettle the slums so, so many uh, models we have discussed so we can link the families uh, the street dwelling uh, families with the slum improvement program uh, in in integration and physically disabled and mentally retarded person uh, for them we have to design the uh, the night shelter in such a way say that it should accommodate um, adequately the physically disabled and mentally retarded person may be possibly for the mentally retarded person we may provide special accommodation accommodation with some amount of um, the counseling facility so that they can come to the normal um, mainstream of the life and they can uh, they can earn their livelihood they can grow in their life um, uh, cycle and come to the uh, formal uh, life cycle with a family and a happy life so that's the major issues other than the location and the um, and the the typology or the target category another problem or the ad or the barrier what we address is the kind of uh, the implementation now mostly it is being implemented by the ngos now uh, there are few NGOs who are working very nicely in this sector, but we need to have a mechanism uh, which will which we need to develop a mechanism which will streamline the process of maintaining, designing, designing, maintaining, operating a night shelter of different typologies and its uh, uh, standardized methods and the processes that we have to work out. Uh, because of the absence of those kind of uh, uh, mechanism, there are few NGOs who are working on their own initiative uh, um, excellently, but there are few NGOs who are struggling who cannot deliver um, in this kind of situation. So, implementation is always a problem because of the poor implementation of the night shelter schemes, uh, we are sometimes unable to, to, uh, to, to reach the benefit for these pavement dwellers. So, keeping uh, these few points in our mind, you can see some of the temporary structures which are built for the uh, as a night shelter during the extreme weather situa situation for short duration period like one month or two month period. You can see few other um, um, pro um, um, projects 
like here you can see the uh, how temporary structures are made to accommodate this kind of people. Here also you can see that um, just temporary structure with some um, uh, toilet facility, uh, it is under Ren Basera, under government of Delhi is given, some few um, um, datas are given. So, as a whole this is um, you can you can you can take a glimpse that from this set of pictures that uh, that it needs a design interventions, it needs a, a specific technological or technical input to improve its quality um, in terms of physical quality, to improve its design quality and its um, uh, its overall environmental quality so that they get the maximum benefit. So, with this note we uh, conclude this lecture, the next lecture we will uh, discuss the another very important aspect of the um, uh, housing planning that is the old age home. So, before I conclude let me uh, summarize quickly, uh, the pavement dwellers or the street dwellers is one of the very important typologies in our city, because in the cities we have seen many people they are uh, living on the streets or the public places or in the public terminals who does not have the formal house and who does not have the capability to afford the, uh, the formal house. And as a result of their um, various reasons like extreme poverty, family abandonment or family conflict or social uh, conflicts, they are sometimes forced to leave their uh, actual uh, life, rural life to the urban life and uh, they are uh, forced to live in an inferior condition. And they basically live on the streets in the railway terminals, bus terminals, uh, under the sheds, under the ledge and, uh, and basically they, they live on the public services. So, there can be three types of approach like shelter approach giving the shelter to the people, uh, infrastructure approach giving the infrastructure and services to the people and also livelihood ap approach giving the livelihood uh, to these people. The one of the major issues are how to integrate these three approach like shelter approach, integrated um, infrastructure and service approach and the livelihood approach. One of, one of the possible could be that we can design uh, kind of a movable shops um, for these people, so that they can have their livelihood even in the uh, streets and the public areas and they can earn their uh, livelihood and uh, slowly slowly they can develop their own house. And uh, night shelters, we discussed the option of the night shelter as a shelter approach uh, thoroughly. The issues of the night shelters are basically uh, location, uh, the typology as per the target group, various typologies are there. We are uh, right now unable to fulfill all those typologies and the implementation, the poor implementation of the night shelter uh, uh, projects. So, night shelter can be updated to a different typologies, static, movable and it can be integrated with the livelihood options like the street vending and also it can be linked with the, uh, the services approach like the, uh, the Sulab Sochala or kind of a public toilets. So, this kind of integration is required and overall we need to have a overall mechanism and over of integrated approach and integrated um, strategies uh, nationally and, uh, and for the each of the states and cities for the street dwellers. Otherwise, in isol isolation, if we uh, take the action, it may not be successful. So, with this note and the spirit that sometimes we will also uh, be able to provide shelter for the night shelter, with this note, we uh, conclude this lecture. Thank you.